when the default is to do things is to to equate success with like getting lots and lots of approval from other people and when when you have societies that have that then you become very very afraid of doing anything that invites disapproval so you have lots and lots of conformity and then you have lots of people in positions of power and influence who conform even though they don't need to monetarily i hate i get so mad at these executives like oil executives who will conform to stuff they don't think is wrong i'm like you're already independently wealthy you have 50 million dollars or whatever it is you don't i don't think you need to conform even if you don't but if you're independently wealthy you have no excuse for conforming cuz then you can just live on your own and do what you want whereas the person who's making $25,000 a year and afraid of getting fired maybe yeah they feel like they need to sign the climate change pledge at work but you don't so you're just doing this because you want to be praised at cocktail parties <laughs> and that i have a, you know that that i don't i don't approve of not that you should care about my approval but <laughs> i don't approve uh, of that so i think you know one lesson is people should should read the fountainhead and they should be just aware of themselves and i i i think we all need to think about this all the time i'm not immune from it myself we need to just think about am i like am i too dependent on other people's approval one way or the other and if you're not if if you can really have your own standards you're going to be a lot happier and you're going to be a much better member of society because the best people who do the best things are people who have their own standards and act on their own conviction so what can we do to set ourselves up to be incentivized to stick to our own standards and i'm asking from the show too i uh -huh. i could create an echo chamber and not have thoughtful discussions and people would click on it and people would like it maybe maybe but what what can i do what can other people do to be incentivized to have more thoughtful discussions to live up to their own standards i mean i was trying to just gave that long pitch to try to understand right right there's a self awareness right, i wonder right. are there um are there practical things or is it is it a pursuit of financial independence well i think there's a bunch of things i mean one is to just you you need to i think you need to really want the kind of life that's involved in being really happy with how you live your life and i think it's a rare thing but it's it's a totally different experience than not having that like having your own standards and living up to them and then you really want to have a lot of contempt not not so much for others but for yourself in so far as you're driven by like the approval of others leaving aside your own standards and just i know i've thought about this in the past i've noticed myself like why did i care about what this person thought and usually i would notice it when i was getting approval and then i lost it and then i realized oh wait you cared too much about it in the first place over time I become more sensitive and i'll notice even if i don't lose it on us i care too much about this person like oh i meet this person that i admire like i care what they think of me in a way that doesn't make any sense because they they haven't had right i mean i would like to know them but if it's like if i really care does this person love my book right i want them to love it if 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 it meets their standards and if our standards are aligned but if they discover something wrong with it i don't want them to love it or if they just they're not thinking about i think they're not thinking about it clearly i don't want them to love it so you want to like i see when i see people looking for approval that feels pitiful to me and when i do it myself it really feels pitiful and so that's a big thing it's just internally having a kind of healthy shame about it. not shame that oh i felt this but like this is not the way that i want to live and i think and positively you want to just this idea of like having a creative life where you create things that you believe in and you think for yourself one thing in the market that i think is is underrated that's an incentive is the people who are themselves tend to do really well or often do if they have something to offer so it's not just it's not just oh be yourself and you're guaranteed but if you've actually tapped into something that is also if it's cuz when you're being yourself creatively to really do that is not just i'm going to write my music and you guys better want to listen to <laughs> it it's really you have to care about the audience like when I, when i think about you know, fossil future was definitely the hardest thing i ever created and i i spent over 3 years on it and i think about the audience very very like i want to help somebody two audiences somebody who expects to disagree with me but i think is really wrong i want to take them step by step from who the, why should i listen to this random guy when all the experts think the opposite like i want to take them from that to a great thing to do with your life is to advocate more fossil fuels i i want to take them there and then the other thing is the people who are sympathetic to me i want to give them the ammunition to make these points and to persuade others. So I have those those goals, but both of those goals are their thing I want to create it because I like 
I like solving these puzzles of explanation. I like explaining really difficult things that people expect to disagree with. And then I care about the issue. And then I also want, you know, I want to do well. Like, I mean, I want it to support me and it fortunately will support me. I want those things, but, but part of it is I'm thinking about them, which is different from just, oh, I want to, you sometimes find this artist, just, oh, I want to do my art. I want to do my show and people need to watch it. <laughs> yeah. So you really need to love your audience and, yeah. and love, love what you're creating for them. But if you do that, being yourself has so many advantages that you just don't find that, that you can, because people are smart. They're, they're very smart about this particular kind of thing. They can tell, at least a lot of times, they can tell when people are calculated. It would be even somebody like, I don't, I don't know him personally at all, but even like Jordan Peterson, many ways, many things about him are clearly that is the way he is. And you wouldn't tell someone to be that way. <laughs> Like including things that may, he may not even think are the healthiest things, but you like there's something about somebody who's real and themselves. And actually, part of the people who are truly great at media, which I would not put myself in that category at this point, but they they can really be themselves. Like they're a hundred percent themselves in front of a camera, and you can and you can you can just feel that. And so I think that if if you really love your audience or you really love the consumer of your product and then you love creating it and you're just you're happy doing that then and you don't have and you're kind of happy doing that indefinitely like part of part of not having bad motives is you know, with some of the stuff people they're always angling for the next thing or they're just it's just like it's not enough to be in the interview it's kind of like okay there's one thing at the end of this interview you'll probably ask me something like hey where can people find out about your book right and i absolutely want everyone to buy the book so don't take this as you know i want to buy the book but kind of in the moment, what I want to do is I want to explain the thing as clearly as I can in a way that's compelling to you and to the audience. And like, I like that experience. And it's not, it's not oh, I'm doing that, I'm just doing that experience so that I can sell a bunch of books. And so I have to put on a front or something like that. Mm -hmm. And you, in general, you want to be doing things where you enjoy the thing as an end in itself and it leads to further things. So these people, there, so I'm, I'm making this point because being yourself has these incredible advantages that, and a lot of stuff that's hard to, to convey verbally that people really pick up on and just think, how many people have you seen where you just say, this person is calculated. They're just, they just want to, like with a podcast, they just want, everyone has a podcast. I want to have a podcast. Right. Versus some people, they really, they really feel like, even if there are a million podcasts, they feel like, no, million and one is desperately needed. There's something that is needed that I find. And I actually find this with part of the reason I agreed to do this, because I disagree to do most, the vast majority of podcasts is like, you were very insistent and you really seem to want to have me here. And, and you said your audience did. And to me, that that is very different than somebody who's just, I can tell, oh, they just need a new guest to fill a slot and they think I'll get them an audience. So sincerity can also pay commercially, particularly in our line of work with ideas. And that's where people are often afraid of it. But it's, it's, uh, it can be very rewarding if you love your audience, if you're really creating something valuable. And unless yourself is just terrible, but even terrible people, people like. <laughs> True. <laughs> Thanks for watching that video. To see the full episode, check out the box over here or the link in the description.